Alrighty, welcome back to episode three. Uh, today we're talking about browsers, and I know that seems like a very boring topic, but this is the first legitimate issue. There's lots of other little things you can nitpick on, but the first legitimate issue that most of the users have when transitioning from uh, one interface to the other. So let me just go ahead and open up a few uh, models real quick. So we'll be fine. Okay. And wonderful. So the, the biggest difference in the browsers is that in the old GUI, uh, we had the entity editor down at the bottom. And as you would go and, and have a large uh, group of, of parts and materials and properties, everything would be shown in the model browser, right? The model browser was here. So this is your home, your safe place. And you could access all the information directly from the model browser. As we move over to the new GUI, um, we're going to see a few other things pop up in the browser. I think that is fine. I don't think that's the big difference. But the big thing that, that comes up is, let's say, you know, it says that I have six components here. And it says I have one component over here. The number doesn't matter. But the ability to open up the components on this left-hand side is no longer there by default in the newest GUI. And that is because we're using these browsers now in the new GUI as what we call a table of contents, right? So we're not gonna show you everything that's in there. That's not what the table of contents in a book is meant to do. It's meant to kind of introduce a chapter and maybe give one or two main thoughts. And then if you want to learn more about those thoughts, you go into the actual chapter itself, okay? So, I might be saying, well, how do I get a list of my components, right? Well, so the way that you will do this and, and with any entity within the, the browser now is to double click on the chapter and this will open up a new browser named components in which you will have a list of all of your components. And depending upon which browser you open, you will get also excess and, and lots of other information. This is the biggest change. And so you might be wondering, well, why? Why did we do this? So the reason that we did this is that we could be a lot more customizable. We could be a lot more um, flexible with what is shown in each of these browsers. Okay. So case in point, let me just go and create a couple of materials. Uh, just put in some numbers. This looks like a really wonderful material. Thank you very much. Let me create another one. Uh, let me change the numbers here, blah, blah, blah. What units am I in? Oh, I don't know. Whichever ones I feel like today. Uh, you know, let's, let's do some new. 0.3 is always a good option. Okay. So I've made a couple of materials. I don't see those materials listed, right? They're, they'll be collected by their type, but I don't see them listed as compared to, you know, material one is here, and then you go and you do a very similar thing. And I could create another material. And the material two is here. And I can, you know, toggle between them and see them within the model browser, right? I don't I don't have that option here. So we're requiring you to double click to go into the materials. And from here, you can see, okay, well, there's my materials, and then there's some information about said materials. And the reason that we can do this outside of this material view is that we can now filter based upon these values. So I could look for things, uh, materials, if there were hundreds of them that have a modulus of a certain amount, you know, whether that's greater than or equal to or less than or or um, whatever. So I can type in, you know, E equals a certain amount or E greater than equal to, et cetera, et cetera. So I get some really nice uh, uh, filtering and, and sorting capabilities here. Um, I also have the ability to right click and edit any other type of information that I'd like. And the reason that I would do this, especially being an engineer, with my main goal is to just get back to Excel, uh, I can now right click in here and export out a CSV file of all of this information and any of the columns that I have. And also if you're a big Excel person, it might just be easier to look at these columns and know if you need to change something, you can just come in here and change uh, that value right within the column itself. Okay? Obviously not something that we had within the model browser in the classic interface. You can say, well, Blaze, we did have those options to go to these different views, these little subfolders here. 
I said, yes, you did. And you also had the ability to come in and add things as well. Okay. And you also had the ability to export a CSV file. That's very true. Um, but what we didn't really have is we didn't have uh, as much search capability. Okay. So we had some, but not as much. And also these views were not really linked to the model. Okay. Uh, so once again, we can use these views to, uh, you know, highlight, click and highlight and select and use the, the actual browsers now for selection. Okay? Whether that be in an actual tool where we need to, to select a component or we need to select a solid, we can do all of that now from the browser uh, that's linked. Uh, these browsers also in the newest version can be ripped off and docked to different places. Uh, the bottom of your screen, this can just be floating in the middle of, of anywhere. Uh, once again, this is, is linked. So even this, if this is on a separate screen somewhere and you're, you know, toggling through items, uh, you know, it will still highlight uh, in the GUI. And just pop this in back here. So if this is not enough of a reason, and I understand that this can be cumbersome for a very small model, right? So for this model here, I was trying to make materials and properties and trying, you know, the really the only way to see what those materials and properties are to go to the specific browsers, uh, that can kind of be cumbersome, right? So I will, I will uh, yield that point on small models, but on large models, when you have hundreds of materials, uh, hundreds, thousands of properties, right? Um, we can't even show all those in the, the, the traditional browser anyway, right? So it kind of makes more sense to be able to open up a, a particular folder and be able to do some sorting and filtering um, and have all those abilities there. Okay, so I'm not going to leave you hanging. I will, if this is your main qualm about this and you say, well, I really like it, the new interface, it looks nice, it's functional for what I need it to do. It's just, this is really annoying, right? I can't open components. And then also the other big one is I can't uh, open assemblies, right? So I could say there's an assembly with a particular number of components, right? Grab a couple of them. Normally I could go and say, well, I can expand that and see the components within that assembly. So how do I fix this? Okay, fine. Uh, we can go and right click in the browser in kind of the blank place, and we can go and configure this browser. Okay. And what the, the, the option that we're looking for in here is, is called show entities under subfolders. Okay. And when we go ahead and hit OK, this will give us a little rethink. And we will now have the ability to open up components and open up assemblies within the browser itself. Uh, same thing with materials here. You'll they'll still be collected via their their kind of card image, but you will also be able to expand as well to get this final part. And then you'll also have the entity editor down at the bottom left kind of all the time. Okay. So there is a fix. We can go back. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but this is usually the biggest complaint that that most people have as soon as they switch. This is the first thing that they notice. This is their first gripe. So hopefully that helps kind of explain why we did it. Sometimes I think we need to do a better job of that. Uh, and then this is the fix for, for doing it. So um, with that, I hope you're all doing well. I appreciate your time and we'll talk next week. Thanks.